Well, I thought I'd to go over these top 10 tips for a terrific new year this year. Number one would be to eliminate all those petty annoyances, the things that you're tolerating or putting up with. And that would just be to very quickly make a list of 60 to 100 things. These can be little bitty things. They can be big things. So it could be you've got scuffed shoes or run down heels that you keep thinking, oh, I've got to take those to that shoe repair guy. So make a list, a separate list, not a to-do list, but ideally, of course, set aside a Saturday or Sunday and blast through a whole bunch of them and get them off your list because these are your little energy drains preventing you from having the most successful year that you could have. So tip number two is to eliminate the shoulds. These are what I call dead goals, things that you think you should do. So a lot of people start their New Year's resolutions thinking, oh, I should do this, I should do that, I should exercise, I shouldn't get, get in shape. Okay, so right off the bat, you can just throw those goals right away. You don't need to have those goals. You know, as a life coach, I can tell you, those goals are dead. You can whip them like you would a dead horse, but they aren't getting up and they aren't going anywhere. The most common dead goals are lose weight and get in shape. Bad goals, you probably have them for years already. Why would you set them once again? <laughs> it's called setting yourself up for failure. We don't want to do that. So instead, pick a goal that really excites you and motivates you. If you do want to get in shape and lose weight, don't pick that as a goal. Pick something well, that will have that as an end result. You know, run the London Marathon. That would have that as an end result. Do something that would have that be your end result as a byproduct, not as the goal itself. And have that something that you choose to set as a goal be really exciting and interesting and fun to do, much more likely than that you'll be successful. Number three, unclutter or declutter your life. Get rid of the excess baggage that you've been dragging around. And that might be stuff that you have, big or little, maybe you just need to clear out the uh, golf compartment in your car and clear out that garage or the attic space or loft space that you have, clear out the clutter that you have right in front of you. Is there a pile of paper on your desk? Well, that's clutter. And actually, there's a side bonus to getting rid of clutter. Uh, clutter represents stuck energy. And when people start coaching, oftentimes they feel stuck. It's really funny because you're actually creating the space for new and better opportunities or people or things to come into your life. Number four is be an instant billionaire. This is a really fun one. You just uh, get out a blank piece of paper and just pretend that somebody's just handed you a check. You've won the lottery for a billion dollars. I know it's not real, but pretend it is. Humor me. Get your pencil out and write down as many things as you would go, do, be, and have now that you're a billionaire. And it can be goofy stuff like you'd go out and buy a Ferrari or something. And it can be, you know, more serious stuff. Well, say I wouldn't do this job, I would do a different job. I would do something that I find enjoying and rewardable and fun. So write that stuff down. It expands our thinking because it's thinking about what's possible. Number five, identify your needs. If you want to reach your goals more effortlessly this year, it's helpful to be attractive to people, opportunities, new new careers, new you know, possibly. Uh, and to do that, it really helps to get your personal and emotional needs fulfilled because we know that being needy is in, in inherently repellent and that we actually repel the very people and opportunities that we want to attract if we're showing up as being needy or desperate in any way. And yet, if I just tapped you on the shoulder and said, hi, what are your top four personal and emotional needs? I bet you you wouldn't be able to answer me. But it's a very good idea to know what your needs are, because if you don't know what your needs are, how are you going to get them fulfilled? And if your needs are unfulfilled, you're going to be unattractive at some level and pushing away the right people and opportunities, possibly job opportunities as well, that you most want. So worth taking a look at your needs. How do you do that? We have a, a quiz called the Emotional Index Quiz. Uh, it's free on lifecoach.com. You know, you take it. It takes 20 minutes, so you've got to commit 20 minutes to this. But it will tell you what your top four personal and emotional needs are at the end of the quiz. Useful stuff. Number six, strengthen your strengths. One of my big, big complaints with the corporate world is oftentimes they focus on weaknesses. So, okay, you get your review at the end of the year, and they say, all right, these are your weaknesses. This is what you need to develop. Well, that's all right, but why not say, these are your strengths. Let's really have you get good at these strengths. So it's really, it's really much easier to become masterful at something that we're already pretty good at. And mastery usually pays well and is rewarded, and we value mastery. Becoming mediocre, which is being good at things you're not naturally good at, is very hard to do. First of all, it's hard to get good at something we're not naturally good at. Let's strengthen your strengths instead. 
Number seven, do what you love. Now, sometimes when we do what we love, we don't always get paid for it, but you should still do it anyway. You know, sometimes you might love playing golf or doing ballroom dancing, but you'll never, you know, be good enough or would want to even be good enough to do that as a profession or a career. You still need to do that and do that this year. Why? Doing what you love gives you energy. It energizes you. It doesn't matter what it is. Doing what you love regularly, and ideally you want something that you can do every week, that will charge you up. It will fuel you and energize you so that you have the energy to do your job well and to do the, your, you look after your family and everything else. Now, the ideal situation is to do what you love for your work. So well worth working on figuring that out. And if you don't, if you're not happy in your work, <laughs> what are you doing wasting your life? Come on, get a new career. Number eight, design your ideal life. This is where sometimes people get it wrong. They focus so much on their work and they go, I've got to get this job, I've got to get this money, and then I can live my life. Well, actually, why not figure out what your ideal life is first and then orient your work so that it supports your ideal life. So much easier. So if you find the ideal thing is to find a job that's a match to your core values, that's the stuff that you would be doing even if you were a billionaire. So what would you do anyway, even if money was not the issue? So start with that, then figure out the career that will support your ideal life. Number nine, attract what you want without really trying. Okay, and to do that, I mean, you know, having worked on some of this other stuff will all help you uh, be more attractive because you've, you've basically done a couple of things. You've gotten rid of the things that were draining your energy by doing the first three tips. Uh, and number five, by identifying your needs, you'll be much more attractive to potential opportunities. Um, you think about it, two people going for the same job, one's kind of needy and desperate, the other one's got their needs met, is doing something that they love to do. Who do you think is going to get that job? You can start to attract the things that you want by having thoughts and notions about it, and they start coming to you. And finally, number 10, it's all good, even the bad stuff. And this is, this is my philosophy of life, <laughs> is that it's all good, even the bad stuff. I put a, put a positive spin on everything, because sometimes bad stuff happens in life. You know, and you think, okay, well, you know, so let's see, I've got credit card debt. Well, how is that bad stuff, credit card debt, good? Hmm. Well, maybe that's showing me that I need to learn how to manage my money more effectively. How is it perfect that I don't like my boss or colleagues? Hmm, well, maybe I need to learn how to manage my boss more effectively or how to work more effectively with my colleagues and perfect this current job so that the next job won't be like this. Or maybe it's time to leave this job and find work that I really enjoy. So it all, if you start looking at what's the good thing in this, and maybe that bad thing is, is, is the prompt for you to take a look at something. Uh, you know, the credit card is a prompt to say, hmm, yeah, no, I don't want to have this. I want to be financially secure and free. So that's a good thing, isn't it? So you can turn all this bad stuff into an opportunity to learn. Uh, you can turn any adversity into a challenge that will make you stronger and better and, and fitter as a human being. So that's what I can say. It is all good, even the bad stuff. So that's my quick top 10 tips, and you can use these tips year after year and start orienting your life around what you love to do.